We are inside Black and Gold. Steve Geller along with Jeff Nowak bringing you the latest and greatest on the Saints. And Jeff, we got a little bit of coaching news. Sean Payton in Denver trying to, well, I guess not trying to, actually poaching one coach already and remains to be seen if any more might be headed out to mile high, joining former now Saints offensive assistant Zach Streve. Yes, poaching is the correct term. Um, it, it is not illegal in the NFL, uh, but that's what Sean Payton is going to do. So, yeah, just, just to get into this, we're going to talk about some of the coaching moves in this first segment here. And then the second two segments are going to be kind of a who is Joe Woods, who's, who's going to be the hire for the Saints defensive coordinator. Looked up some information on him, so we'll have a lot to go over. But, yeah, so first things first, Zach Streif, assistant offensive line coach. It seems like he's been – in that role for a lot longer than he has, but it's really just because he went from being a player to being a broadcaster. He obviously worked with us for a couple of years as the voice of the saints alongside Deuce McAllister on WWL radio. And then he went from that to being the assistant offensive line coach, but he was only in that role for two years. It feels like he'd been there a lot longer than that, but you know, Sean hired him into that role before the 2021 season. At that point, it was Brendan Nugent who was the offensive line coach this past season, it was Doug Marone, and so Zach stuck around for that season. And now, as you kind of expected, Sean has turned to a guy who he knows very well, who he hired, who he coached for a dozen years um, to lead his offensive line group out in Denver. And good for him. Like, good for good for Zach. I think he's done a really good job in that role. And, you know, everyone spoke very highly of the work he'd done. And so uh, good for him getting an opportunity out there. Yeah, it'll be sad, obviously, to to lose a guy like him. A lot of people refer to Streif, too, as maybe the smartest person in that Saints building. Uh, I know just, you know, that brief stint I got to work with him. My first year on the sideline was actually his first year as the voice of the Saints, too. So we kind of like were, you know, feeling out a new position together. Uh, really enjoyed the time I got to be his quote-unquote teammate on the Saints radio squad. And yeah, I, I definitely felt like this was, it wasn't a big surprise at all seeing, you know, Streif joining Peyton in Denver just because of the fact of the relationship they, they have together and, and knowing how tight that bond is, plus how much Sean thinks of, of Streif and the work he can do going ahead. Brief Streif. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, you know, you look at Zach Streif's career he might be one of the most successful seventh round draft picks of, <laughs> of all time. When you think about it, like he and Marcus Colston went 42 picks apart in the seventh round back in 2006, you know, one of the best seventh rounds for any team ever. Like, you, you know, you got two legitimate talents out of the seventh round of the draft and that just doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, so good for him. And, and so it's just kind of, it's been a very, very interesting off season in terms of, you know, heading into the 2022 season, the buzzword was continuity. Pretty much outside of Sean Payton leaving, everything stayed the same. You know, Dennis Allen got promoted. You you elevated Chris Richard and Ryan Nielsen into the co-defensive coordinator role, but there were still – Nielsen was coaching the defensive line. Richard was coaching the secondary. Michael Hodges was still coaching the linebackers. You did move on from Brendan Nugent, but you hired Doug Marone, again, a guy you are very familiar with, in terms of how he operates on the Saints. So, you know, by and large, other, oh, and, and Cody Burns, obviously, it's wide receivers coach. But by and large, you kept that staff. This year, you have changed a lot. Ryan Nielsen is now the defensive coordinator with the Atlanta Falcons. He got introduced today. Obviously, Sean Payton's out in Denver. And you got that first-round pick back. Um, and then you, you also moved on from Dan Rochar, who was the tight ends coach and run game coordinator. Poor Dan was the only guy that was really quote unquote let go. Yes, he was. He they must not have been very happy with the performance that that he was putting out there with the tight ends because they they moved on from him quick too. Although I guess I guess you could technically say also Richard was they had like a mutual parting of ways, right? Yes, yes, but he wasn't like fired. Like, no, right, right. They waited it out to see how things would have developed because I think they would have wanted to keep him on as the secondary coach if they could. That's the only thing that makes sense to me in terms of how that developed. Because if they weren't going to make him the defensive coordinator, 
uh, then, you know, that's, that's probably how that, how that all came about. Um, but he's, I, he has not surfaced anywhere in terms of being in line for a job. Miami hired Vic Fangio. So that was a job he interviewed for, and he, he's not going to get that. I believe the Panthers hired a hero Evero. Is that correct? Right, from Denver. Yeah. The, the coach that Sean Payton let out of that job. So to me, the only real landing spot left for Richard would be Sean Payton's staff, which would make sense because Sean Payton hired Chris prior to the 2021 season. So, you know, I think there's still a shoe to drop there, but there's going to be a lot of changes, right? And so you've already hired, or at least the reports are that you've hired Joe Woods. He was the defensive coordinator for the Browns the last three seasons. We don't need to get a ton into a ton with that there because we're going to, as I mentioned, have a whole bunch of Joe Woods talk in the second two segments here. But you've also hired Todd Grantham as a defensive assistant. He's a longtime SEC coach. He also coached for several NFL teams, and he managed the defensive line for three separate NFL teams. And so I have to imagine that's what they're going to have him doing for the Saints, right? Like it's the only spot that makes sense because you wouldn't hire Todd Grantham to just be kind of a random coach on your staff. No, yeah, that one definitely – you know, when that hire happened, it it just seems logical, like you said, uh, to be placed in that role. I'm I'm definitely curious to see now where they're going to go for a secondary coach. Yeah, I think there's a possibility that Joe Woods just takes that job, right? Like the way that Nielsen was coached the defensive line and Rashad coached the secondary, and you're able to do that because Dennis Allen is so so heavily involved. Um, but I still think they probably do want to hire a secondary coach. So the interesting thing is, do you hire, and we were talking about this before we came on, do you hire an assistant offensive line coach, right? Or do you kind of take that spot and turn it into that extra coaching position you would have to have for a secondary coach? I don't know how many coaching positions they have budgeted for, but it would be one extra one because you had that co-defensive coordinator who was also, who were also doubling up as a position coach. Now, the, the other question is, does Sean Payton poach anybody else? Now, he couldn't technically poach anyone into a lateral move, right? The reason you were able to get Streif, assuming that, you know, the reporting is accurate on that, is because he was an assistant offensive line coach and he is being hired as a full-fledged offensive line coach. So that is a clear promotion and NFL teams can't block people from taking promotions. They can only take them, they can only block them from taking lateral moves. So who else could they potentially could they potentially poach? Well, you can't poach Michael Hodges in a linebacker coach role, but could you potentially poach him to a defensive coordinator role? Maybe. That, that would be, I think, kind of a stretch just because it's something he hasn't done yet anywhere. And I would just think another team would be looking for someone with more of a track record. No, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, and a couple other names, Declan Doyle, he coached yeah. tight ends at the senior bowl, right? Maybe he's the guy who's in line to take the saints tight ends coach job, right? That might be kind of a, that might've been kind of a trial run for him to see how it went. Um, but he could also be a guy who gets poached by, by Sean and his new staff. When we talked to Declan, he was very, very complimentary of Sean Payton. He, he talked to, he, he said something along the lines of like working with Sean, is like getting a PhD in football. It's like going to Harvard for football. He said that he changed his life in a football sense. Um, so this, this is a Sean Payton guy. And right. so, you know, if there's a spot open on that staff, I wouldn't be surprised if you see you see a guy like Declan go after it. Um, DJ Williams, who coached quarterbacks at the Senior Bowl, could be an option there, the son of Doug Williams. Um Corey Robinson, who coached safeties at the Senior Bowl, actually let his contract expire, so he is going yeah. to be a "quote unquote" free agent in a coaching sense. So that's someone else you could see you could see move along. Um, but one way or another, you're going to see some significant turnover on this coaching staff, and you know a majority of it is on the defensive side of the ball. And I know that's been frustrating to some people because you kind of see that side of the football as the thing that worked this past yeah. season, and you're not wrong. But I will say that. I was very critical personally. I was very critical of the defense over the first half of the season. And while they did look really good over the second half of the season, you can make a very valid argument that one of the reasons this team was in a position 
that they had to be perfect over the final eight games was that the off defense underperformed for the first nine weeks of the season. Yeah. And it could have been, you know, a, a lot of different factors there to getting used to maybe two, you know, co-defensive coordinators along with Dennis Allen. I always wondered how that the message was going to get across the players and if things were going to get uh, a little jumbled, but it seemed to whatever happened there, they definitely got their act together midway through the season going towards the, the latter stretch of the year, that defense. And I think to me, the defensive side of the ball, even with coaches, I'm not so worried about just because DA is the guy, we know he's still going to be the play caller. And I think we've seen that he has a pretty good eye for talent and the fact of call, of calling a, a game as well. It's just the other side of the football was what really struggled. And I know Saints fans have been waiting to see on Twitter that, you know, uh, Sean Payton has brought P. Carmichael Jr. over, but that's not a scenario that can happen, quote unquote, legally with the NFL rules unless the Saints let him go, right? Yeah, the Saints would have to just let him out of his contract. Right. Um, and I don't see why they would do that unless they had to. And Pete doesn't strike me like a guy who's going to pitch a fit. You know what I mean? He seems like a pretty amicable fellow. Uh, doesn't make a ton of waves. He's not going to pound his fist on the table and be like, send me to Denver, damn it. Doesn't seem like one of those guys. Plus, the, the other thing is, like, when you talk about it, like, so, for example, might you hire Jari Evans into that assistant offensive line spot, right? He was the coaching intern this past season. He got really high reviews from players. I talked to Cesar Ruiz about him. When I asked him about Jari, he kind of lit up. And I think that that was a big part. You know, you saw Caesar really take a step forward this year, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, working with Jari, who obviously played guard in the NFL, and that was a big part of it, right? Like Zach Streep was a was a tackle, right? So while he's working with the young offensive lineman, he didn't play guard. So you, there's only so much, so much in you know, kind of kind of institutional knowledge that Zach has about playing guard in the NFL, right? So someone who played guard and kind of can walk Caesar and the other interior linemen through some of this stuff was probably helpful, right? And so I think that that was a big part of that. And so maybe you bring him into this assistant offensive line coach role. And I tweeted that and someone was like, well, he's going to go with Sean too. And, you know, I do think it's an interesting question because while, yeah, it's probably attractive for a guy like Streif to get a chance at an offensive line coach role, would Jari uproot his life and move out to Denver and live in snow to be an assistant offensive line coach when he could take that job with the Saints, you know, somewhere that he's a lot more familiar with. I, I don't know. Like, I feel like you you would stay close to home, right? Like a guy like Pete Carmichael, everyone's like, oh, he wants to go hang out with Sean. He's lived in this new this this area like his whole life, basically. He's been he's been the Saints offensive coordinator for 15 years. You think he he's like he's like dying to go live in the snow? He's dying to move across country at this point in his life to live in the snow with Sean? I don't know. Uh, yeah, that, so that's, that could that be something kind of an interesting question. Where you are at this point of your career, what are your family, you know, you uprooting them kind of thing. Right. And yeah, I mean, it. I guess it'd be, if, you, if you're making that move to, for an increase in pay and, and a new title, I could see that. But if you, but an, an, an offensive assistant coach doesn't really have that juice. No, and I mean, maybe they are going to pay a lot more and maybe it is worth it. Maybe he just really likes hanging out with Sean. <laughs> I, I don't know. But I don't think it's as simple as like being like, okay, he wants to go with Sean. Because there's a lot more to it. It's, it's different for a player, right? Like I, I'm, I'm interested to see how many former Saints yeah. or current Saints that are free agents end up in Denver because Sean wants to bring them in. It's it's an interesting thing that you end up with when you – when you overhaul your staff and that's why this free agent cycle is going to be interesting right so you brought in joe woods from the browns how many former browns end up being free agent targets of the saints like ryan nielsen is over in atlanta how many of the current saints free agents that are hitting free agency now end up in atlanta right you brought in todd grantham do you maybe he he was last with alabama as an as an analyst does he maybe have some insight into Alabama players? There's always a billion Alabama players in the draft that you could target. And the Saints don't have any Alabama. Well, that's not true. They have one Alabama player, and it's Mark Ingram. Uh, and that, so you haven't drafted an Alabama player, as far as I can tell, since 2011, right? So, like, 
maybe with Todd Grantham on the staff, Alabama suddenly becomes a, a better target because you have more insight there. And so that's that's interesting to me when, when you're talking about assistant coaches and how the coaching staffs change. Um, because like a guy like, I don't know, Jadavian Clowney is a free agent, right? Is he a guy who Joe Woods likes and wants to bring in? I would doubt it. It's a bad example because Jadavian Clowney basically talked his way off the team over the final few weeks of the season and complained that they were basically running their entire defense to support Miles Garrett. Um, but either way, like my point is that that's where I'm interested in looking now is, you know, where, where do these kind of connections go? Cause I remember when Dave Gettleman took over the giants, suddenly you, you started signing all these former Panthers. Like Bram Gano was the kicker. Jonathan Stewart was the backup running back. You, you were just sign, like James Bradbury. You, you just kept signing former Panthers. And I was like, I hate this. This is the worst. Um, so no, maybe the, the saints become to, Brown South. Yeah. To the flip side of that with Ryan Nielsen, I'm curious to see how many, you know, these saints free agents end up, you know, migrating over to the ATL with him, which would be, uh, kind of a double whammy against the Saints. Unless yeah, you're Marcus unless Davenport. You're kind of, yeah, the, the right. obvious ones are the defensive linemen, right? Marcus Davenport, David Onyemana, Kentavious Street. Those are the guys who I would be surprised if the Falcons don't at least kick the tires on. Kentavious Street, I would I would put money on ending up with Atlanta this offseason. Like I would I would bet money on it. He's who was only as of Ryan Nielsen. <laughs> Absolutely so, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then and then you have other guys like Caden Ellis, for example. He's a DA guy. He's not he's not going to Atlanta because of Ryan Nielsen. But will he re-sign in New Orleans? Because he's you know, we've heard him talk about DA in like the most glowing way. It's almost it's almost bizarre for 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 a player to talk about a guy with like no personality in that glowing way <laughs> but you know it's a, it's it's an example of like you know some coach players are very tied to certain coaches and so when they go other places it's, it's not a coincidence yeah and i mean even with a guy like richard still questioning you know where he might end up he obviously wasn't a linebackers coach either but could could play another factor in that uh the the caden ellis um, situation will be interesting just because of the name he made for himself this year. And, you know, you know, gl glowingly, Demario Davis let everyone know, too, that he was the best kept secret in the NFL as well. Yeah, for Richard, you know, the, the question is cornerbacks, defensive backs, right? Bradley Roby's a free agent. Maybe that's if wherever he lands, maybe that's where Bradley Roby gets targeted. Um, obviously, you know, he's been with Denver before. So maybe Chris Richard ends up being Sean Payton's defensive coordinator and Bradley Roby makes his return to Denver PJ Williams. I think he's a new Orleans lifer. He's going to sign one year contracts until he dies. Um, but other than that, you know, Justin Evans, I don't know if he has any connection, JT gray, Daniel Sorensen, not a ton of big names uh, in the defensive backfield that are, that are going to be free agents. So I think that, that, that side of the equation is pretty well stocked in my opinion. Yeah, Sor Sorensen was one of those names, man, that I, I did a lot more, uh, I guess especially at the end of the season with two interceptions too, but I, I didn't think he was going to be that big of a factor for this team in the secondary, maybe more on special teams, but uh, proved to be a guy that was in the right place at the right time. And uh, there's something said about that too, I guess. Yeah. And speaking of the right place at the right time, congratulations to Demario Davis and Cam Jordan. They are the proud owners of 84,000 new fresh dollars after the NFC won the pro bowl. How much, how much of that did you watch? I watched a decent bit of it on Sunday. Stefan Diggs was really bad in the N NFL's version of the dunk contest with those like fancy catches. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown was was very good. I saw some of that where they were, you know, jumping around and then caught most of the flag football matchup. Uh, all in all, it was okay. I guess a little more competitive than maybe past Pro Bowls had been. I'll give it that, but... Uh, still, for some reason, man, the NFL just doesn't do the all-star game right. It's one of those um, things in sports where I feel like, you know, baseball, hockey, uh, basketball, all their quote-unquote all-star games are a lot more interesting and, and uh, a lot more fun than the NFLs have been over the years. But this one wasn't um, wasn't too bad. I just wish there was more, I guess, Saints involvement for my part. Yeah, I mean, the NFL is never going to be able to put on an exhibition like right, with the, the contact. NBA and, and Major League Baseball because you don't, want, you don't want people to get hurt. Like, that is the last thing you want is people to get like hurt Miles in a Garrett. game like that. 
And so the idea that you're going to tackle, you're just, it's like, it doesn't, it's just like it, I appreciate that they found a way to, to at least play competitive games. Yeah. Without pretending to tackle people. Um, because that was always dumb. It was always dumb. And you had to find a way. And I thought some of it was fun, right? Like the flag football was interesting. Um, it, I thought like the some of the games that they did, like the, the like the offensive lineman pulling. And the nice thing is you can kind of add and subtract different games every year. Like I doubt it's going to be the same next year. They might be able to add new stuff. So I think it's a, it's at least interesting to watch. It's basically the, the time- NBA skills competition at like – and they made it competitive, right? Like they, like the, the yeah. winning team got eighty four thousand dollars, the losing team got forty two each player, um, and so that's a decent little payday to go hang out in Vegas for for a weekend, right? The worst part to me, Jeff, was where were the Pro Bowl quarterbacks? I must have missed that. What do you mean? The talent that was at the Pro Bowl in Vegas did not seem worthy of the status i guess because of other team other players backing out either due to injuries or being in the super bowl obviously You're right yeah like tyler huntley was a quarterback in the at the pro bowl like right it's like what um, it makes it even more embarrassing that demario davis had not made it until this year because like you see some of the guys there but um, but he was an all but he was an all pro before this year which is really stupid yeah i mean it's, it's just a it's just just a party right like so i was impressed yeah. by how many people were actually in the stands like I it was a good saying, crowd yeah, I That's was looking to it. I, I couldn't believe it either. I was like, all right, maybe things will thin out as this flag football game goes along. But no, even the upper decks, you could see the stands were filled. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a sellout, like, but no. you probably had like 30, 40,000 people there, which for an event like that, I mean, so it's like in that sense, you know, they might have been giving tickets away. I wouldn't be surprised if they were literally handing tickets out for free on the street. But even so, like you managed to get that many people in the building, that's impressive in and of itself. So if, if you're looking for a reason to say like, okay, this was a reasonable success, that's it. Because it's if the people who are there are having a good time and the, the people are watching are having a good time. Like I enjoyed watching it. It was more entertaining to watch than a game that does that like is stupid. Yeah, I, um, I saw some statistic that there were two thousand more people in attendance this year compared to last. I, I mean, it's not that. a huge number, but. Well, I mean, yeah, and it was in Vegas last year too, so it's it's you at least you know at least at least no Saints players got arrested this time. Oh, yeah, which we're still dealing with too. Which ha- that's crazy. That hasn't even been resolved. Yep, yep. Alvin and Marcus, neither of them we heard anything about their court cases after getting arrested. Um, well, we did hear about Alvin's, but we didn't get any resolution on it. So that's going to be fun. I can't wait for that to come out. Um, That'll be a whole podcast episode for sure. Yes, sir. <laughs> but all right, let's wrap that segment up. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a lot more about Joe Woods. He is the reported hire for defensive coordinator for the Saints. Got a lot of information on him, and uh, we're going to get into that. This is Inside Black and Gold. If you haven't subscribed yet, do it. Leave us a rating. Leave us a review. Let us know what you think. You can follow me on Twitter at Jeff underscore Noah. You can follow Steve at Steve Geller, WWL, and you can get the latest news at WWL.com. Stick around. And we're back here on Inside Black and Gold. I'm Jeff Nowak. He's Steve Geller. Have you subscribed yet? Have you? Have you subscribed yet? Because if not, press the button. What are you waiting for? Get a five-star review. Why not? I don't Be part of the cool kids. Yeah. There's like four of them. <laughs> You're going get to get it on the ground floor, right? Anyway, it's the offseason. We're, we're getting a little wonky. A little. Yeah. All right. So this segment is going to be the one of two segments that are titled, Who is Joe Woods? Dun, dun, dun. Steve, do you know anything about Joe Woods? Have you heard his name before this week? Um, I did just because the Browns had recently let him go. And uh, his so his name was in the the headlines. But that, I can't say I, I know him for – anything else but um was aware he was obviously uh part of a denver broncos team that won a super bowl so i mean he's at least coming to new orleans with some jewelry yes yes and so one uh i think he was kind of scapegoated with cleveland 
you know, it, it's not that dissimilar to, to what happened with Dennis Allen this whole past season where you get like, oh, fire Joe Woods, fire Joe Woods. That'll solve all of your problems. But the, the Browns actually did. Um, and <laughs> just just leading off, here's John Johnson the third talking about the firing of Joe Woods. Anytime you don't have success, like somebody got to take a fall for it. Uh, like I said, after the game, I, everyone on his staff, they're good people, good coaches, so I know he'll land on his feet. Um, as far as, you know, if he takes people with him or whoever comes in, are they going to, you know, keep the guys over? I, I have no idea, but like I said, everyone's good people, they'll land on their feet. So, yeah, anytime you don't have success, someone has to take the fall for it. <laughs> And, you know, so we're going to get into the, a lot more of this in the second segment, but there's been a lot of criticism over like, oh, why are you hiring someone that got fired? Well, you know, you could make a valid argument that or a fair argument that like, yeah. you know, not all firings are the same. And in some cases, you're getting fired so that the head coach can keep his job. And if you believe John Johnson, the third, which I do because he has two first names and I like it. Um it does sound to me like that's what happened. It's like, okay, we need a fall guy. It's just like Todd Bowles with the Bucks. I'm sorry. It's just like it's just like Byron Leftwich with the Bucks, right? Like he's not the reason that team sucked. Um, but the head coach doesn't want to get fired, so they fire somebody, uh, and, and then you move on. But uh, I thought that was an interesting quote from uh, from John. Yeah, what I'm curious too is just the fact that so many people have this negative uh, perspective of Woods already from his, you know, getting fired from Cleveland and then just automatically those those Raiders ties to Dennis Allen is like, oh, he's just bringing the Raiders down to New Orleans. We're going to be the Oakland Raiders South. And yeah. to me, it's a little funny just to, to think the fact that folks are, the folks think that Dennis Allen is actively trying to fail. Well, the, the criticism that I think is funny is like, oh, Dennis is only hiring his buddies. And it's like, I mean, that's just what happens in the NFL. Like, Yeah, you, absolutely. You, it's it's you all about relationships. You like, working with. like, are we saying that he should only hire people he doesn't like? Like, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, uh, we're going to get in a lot more of that and, and like how this kind of vision is going to look for the Saints in the second, second half of this. But the first half, so we're talking about Joe Woods, right? He's 52 years old, but he's been coaching since 1992. Like, he has an incredibly long coaching resume for a guy who's only 52 years old, right? Like he's not that much older than Dennis Allen, but he's just been doing it forever. Um, he's from North Vandergrift, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'm from Jersey and I don't even know where North Vandergrift is. Never heard of it. No. Okay, yeah, yeah. He was an all-conference defensive back at Illinois State and he started as a defensive assistant at... Muskingum College. Could, Must, you, have have you ever heard of too. Muskingum College? Concord, Ohio. New Concord, Ohio. I'd never heard of it before. Yes. Good old Muskingum University. A, uh, a very a very prestigious football school <laughs> if I've ever heard of one. But, you know, like that's where, that's where he got his start. And, you know, when you look at, okay, why might Dennis Allen want to bring this guy in? It's because partially, like, they've had very similar – career trajectories right so he got his first career like coaching job started with the bucks in 2004 he was a defensive quality control coach it's a similar entry point to what dennis allen had he was a defensive quality control coordinator for the falcons in 2002 that was under jim mora uh, from there he took over as the vikings defensive back coach he was there for seven years now, if you remember anything that happened to the Vikings over that seven-year stretch from about 20, 2006 to 2013, one of them was Brett Favre showed up and led them to the NFC Championship. Yeah. If you remember the team that just broke Brett Favre, it happened to be the Saints. So Joe Woods was the defensive backs coach for the Vikings in the Super Bowl that the Saints were uh, for the, in the NFC championship that the Saints won to go win the Super Bowl. So that's, you know, like this is a guy who's been around for a long time when you think about it like that. Yeah. And I'm seeing here really, you know, didn't know this at all. You know, Wood spent eight seasons in Minnesota and the Vikings finished in the top 10 in four of his first five years with the team. So that's, that's obviously impressive. Yeah. And, and seven years, a long tenure for a position coach. Like that doesn't you you don't usually last last as a position coach that long, especially when you have success. Like you usually will get moved up. And I think that 
one of the things you're going to see here is the effect of like, it was very difficult for minority coaches to get big roles with teams, especially at that point, like things have gotten a little looser in that regard now, but like seven years as a quality position coach and you're unable to get a coordinator job. That's kind of crazy to me. And so you went there. And so by 2010, they were, you know, traditionally the Vikings were, had moved up into, you know, top half of the NFL from a, from a past defense perspective, Xavier Rhodes, is probably I think actually Xavier Rhodes. I always mix it up because like Xavier Henry is a guy. Xavier yeah. Rhodes was was kind of the star cornerback on a lot of those teams, um, and they and they were good. Um, now you go forward like so. The end of Joe Woods Vikings career was in 2013, and so and so yes, he went and hung out with Dennis Allen in Oakland in the 2014 season, and this is where I kind of get this like really weird vibe on twitter of like oh he can't be good he was on dennis allen's staff with the raiders well keep in mind dennis allen was the coach of the raiders for much longer than 2014 he was there in 2012 he was there in 2013 if you go to 2014 it's only a four game stretch dennis allen got fired after four games right so <laughs> look wait, there's this large subset of saints twitter that thinks he can't possibly be a good coach because he's linked to the four game stretch with dennis allen and the 2014 season, which is so odd to me. Like, it's such a weird reason. Like, you could look at that and you could say, well, he must have this really bad connection with Dennis Allen. Or you could look at it and say, this is the most insignificant line on, like, a 25-year <laughs> coaching resume. Because that's what it is. It means nothing. It really doesn't. It means absolutely nothing other than the fact that Dennis Allen likes Joe Woods. Right? right? Like, other than the fact that Dennis Allen, at that point in his career – was like, no, this is a good hire. We're going to go with this guy. And if you believe that Dennis Allen is a good defensive coach and he has a good eye for defensive coaching talent, which his track record would indicate that he does, like guys Dennis Allen hired are getting head co like a coordinator jobs with other teams, then why would that be a bad thing? Anyway. No, I, I, I get it from the fans, though. You know, they, they just see Oakland Raiders, same time as Dennis Allen, Everybody during that time is crap, and we don't want that crap. <laughs> well, it, it would at least have a little more weight if he was there all three years, and it would be like, <laughs> no, oh, yeah, right. this was the guy Four Dennis games. Allen handpicked to be his, you know, his defensive backs coach, and this team floundered, and they were terrible. And it's like, no, he was like the guy who took over in the final, you know, it was like if Ryan Nielsen took over as the defensive coordinator for LSU in 2021. Like, that's how we would talk about Ryan Nielsen. But it's like, he's not the reason this team went in the tank. He was just there at the worst possible time. Like, I think that he was he was moving on from Minnesota. He'd been there for seven years. And now you're just like, okay, how can I kind of get a fresh start? Probably thinking, okay, at some point, maybe I can move up to defensive coordinator here. And uh, it didn't happen. But, you know, from there, he goes and he signs on with the Broncos to be their defensive backs coach. And, and the thing that annoys me is like everyone looks at 2014 as if like, man, he can't be good. He was on the Raiders in 2014, and we all know that team was terrible. Hmm. Well, flash forward one year, <laughs> one calendar year, and he is the defensive backs coach for a Broncos team that led the league in passing defense and won a Super Bowl. We don't want to mention that, though. <laughs> like that's not the season you want to talk about? No, no, we're not going to focus on that. Only the no. negative stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he can't be good. A year before he was on the Raiders, <laughs> but but what the the year he spent coaching the a Broncos D, um, DB room that you could argue was like an all time great DB room, they went through an entire playoff run and allowed one passing touchdown. He must be you know that, that, that's a fluke. That doesn't matter. That well, was all the players. It wasn't the coach. Yeah, I mean, like, like they literally dragged Peyton Manning to a Super Bowl. Like, yes. Peyton Manning was terrible that year. Like, Peyton Manning had a couple really good years with the Broncos. The Super Bowl year was by far his worst season. Brock Osweiler started at, like, four or five games in that season. Like, that defense dragged him there, and the second, and the defensive secondary was a huge part of that. You had guys like Aqib Tlaib on that team. Bradley Roby was on that team. Um, and so, hey, maybe, maybe Bradley Roby is a guy you bring back because he has a Joe Woods connection. Who knows? But, and even, here's the thing. Even if you want to say, oh, that was a fluke. He walked into a great DB room. You know, that doesn't mean he was a good coach. Well, they doubled down the next season. Again, 
in 2016, they were, again, the number one passing defense in the NFL. What are you giving me these statistics? I need all Raiders stats. It, it's just, it, it's like, <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. You're not going to, you're not going to immediately like implicitly trust Dennis Allen hiring guys. And I, I, that's fair. But what annoys me is like the, the, the knee jerk reaction that it must be a bad hire because it's connected to Dennis Allen and you don't like Dennis Allen. But like, when you look at like the actual work this guy has put in from a defensive backs perspective, yeah, it's impressive. And you look at Dennis Allen's background. What's it? His background is obviously DB. So yeah. you, you figure if you trust him with the defense, you trust him with the coaches, and you're getting a coach from a position where his specialty, you know, reigns in. I, I really, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was definitely a little taken back on how much angst there was towards this hire on on social media when it happened but i guess that's sh- like i said it shouldn't be a surprise when it comes to the you know the musings of fans online there's toxicity yeah. no matter what you're talking about um like there's a lot of fans who are toxically complaining that a first round pick wasn't a good return in the sean payton trade which is like you got a first round pick for a guy who's not coaching the team like I, I thought everyone's gonna be like, "Wow, slam dunk!" But like, it's amazing how consistently you'll hear people complaining about that. And so, because you didn't get the John Gruden Hall, and that was the standard yeah. for everyone for whatever reason. Yeah. Anyway, so moving on. So we're back in 2016 with with Joe Woods. He's coming off of his second season as a defensive backs coach for the Broncos. And how good was he during that stretch? Well, he was able to parlay that, parlay his defensive back role into the defensive coordinator position with the Denver Broncos. Now he was on Vance Joseph's staff. And if you know anything about Vance Joseph, he's from Marrero. Um, did not exactly a great head coaching tenure, right? Like, but this is a significant moment for for Joe Woods. Again, like being a minority def- coordinator in the NFL is not all that common, you know, and he, early in his career, he spent seven years as a defensive backs coach for the, for the Vikings, right? He had to go to the Raiders to be a defensive backs coach again. Then he went to the Broncos, won a Super Bowl, and finally he has done enough to become a defensive coordinator in the NFL. And it didn't go well, right? Like it, it was not a good tenure. It wasn't a good tenure for either Joseph or Woods, right? Like the defense regressed to number four against the pass in the league that year. The run defense was good. Uh, but, you know, it just continued to kind of get worse and worse. The next year, they were ranked 20th against the pass, 21st, 21st against the run. In all, it was an 11-21 and 21 stretch for Woods and Joseph. Both get fired, right? Like, that's what happens when you go 11-21 and 21 over two seasons in the NFL. They got right. fired. They moved on. But if you're Joe Woods, you have to be pretty proud of what happens next, right? Because you go out to San Francisco to be a defensive backs coach again. Can you guess where San Francisco finished in pass defense in the 2019 season? Uh, I'll say top five. Number one. Wow. Okay. They were the top defensive secondary against the pass. They went to the Super Bowl. That's the Super Bowl they lost to Pat Mahomes. And so you're Joe Woods. You have (laughs) successfully in your past three seasons serving as a defensive backs coach led your team to to have the number one passing defense in the NFL – all three times. Now you parlayed that first one into a defensive coordinator job. Didn't go great. It didn't go great. You went back to your roots and you were able to successfully guide a very good defense to a Super Bowl as a D-backs, as a DB coach. He he then is going to parlay that again into another defensive coordinator job. And it, it obviously did not go particularly well, but that's going to be the next segment. But that's that's where we are. We are talking about a coach who has, as a DB's coach, led two separate teams over three seasons to have the best pass defense in the NFL. But if you go on Saints Twitter, all you will hear about is how he coached with Dennis Allen for four games back in 2014. Yeah, that's outlandish to think is that's that's what's going to stand out for him to the Saints fan, well, to some Saints fans, I'll say, although the majority even, because yeah, it hasn't been pretty on on social media uh, with this hire, and you know the to boot with with Zach Streif leaving 
for Denver. Once again, there's been, you know, the negative Nellies out there cussing the Saints. Yeah, and again, and again, and we're going to get into a lot more about what happened with the Browns and how I think this is going to all work out with the Saints and why they hired him in the first place in the next segment. But like that, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. It's like, I get it. You don't like Dennis Allen. You would like to see the Saints move on, whatever. You don't think this was a good decision. Fine. But like, don't just reflexively assume that this is a bad hire because you don't like Dennis Allen. Because like when you look at all like like the big, bigger picture of what Joe Woods has done in the NFL, it's a pretty impressive pick. Like he has serious accolades. Like he has a Super Bowl ring, right? <laughs> like, uh, like he's been to multiple NFC championships, right? Like he's been to three, I would count. So he had one with the Vikings, one with the Broncos that they won, and one with the 49ers that they lost. No, I'm sorry. One with the 49ers that they won, and then another Super Bowl that they lost. So like, you know, if you're looking for a guy who has who has like serious experience in that role, you got it. Um, and if the only thing you can say negatively about him is Dennis Allen likes him, then I think you are approaching this from the wrong side of the equation. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we're in that uh, that down cycle right now with this team where they had a bad year. Uh, there was some very few, I guess you could say bright spots and fans are just ready to pile it on, uh, expecting the worst living in doom and gloom. But the one positive you would say was definitely the defensive, the scoring defense down the stretch was absolutely amazing for the saints. And if Dennis Allen, you know, is your leader, your guy, your, 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 coach that is also your essentially defensive coordinator that's in charge of that side of the football, I would think you'd have a little more confidence in who he thinks should be brought in. And I know that the perception is obviously they were together on a terrible Raiders team, but you just pointed out that was just four games. They barely got to know each other there. Right. Like, I mean, it was a month. It was training camp in a month. Um, (laughs) But yeah, let's let's cut that off there. Again, this is the Who is Joe Woods segment of the Inside Black and Gold podcast. And uh, we're going to come back with more from, you know, his Browns tenure. I have some more quotes from uh, from a player on the Browns, you know, kind of what happened there and how we kind of can project what could happen here with the Saints over the next few months. Stick around on Inside Black and Gold. And we are back one more time. This is part two of the Who is Joe Woods segment. This is Inside Black and Gold. I'm Jeff Nowak. He's Steve Geller. And so as we kind of went through in the last segment, Joe Woods, defensive backs coach for the Broncos, led the team to the number one pass defense in the NFL 2015-2016, got the job as the defensive coordinator, did not go well, ended up getting fired with Vance Joseph after two seasons, right? Right. Goes to, goes to San Francisco as the defensive backs coach again. Leads the, the secondary to the number one pass defense in the NFL. They get to the Super Bowl. They lose to the Chiefs, although, you know, you could put that on, on uh, not Josh McDaniel, on Kyle Shanahan because they blew a 10-point lead in the second half of that game. Uh, no one blows leads quite like a Shanahan. <laughs> um, and so then you're, you're looking around. You're Joe Woods. You you have been a defensive coordinator in the NFL. You have some experience and Kevin Stefanski comes calling. Now, one thing you can definitely say about Joe Woods is the people who have worked with him tend to want to work with him again, right? So Dennis Allen worked with him with the Raiders back in 2014. We talked about that extensively. Kevin Stefanski worked with Joe Woods back on the Raiders. I think Kevin Stefanski was a tight ends coach and he had a couple other roles during that period of time. And so clearly people who work with Joe Woods have a tendency to want to work with him again. So that's a good great impression, right? Right. When you're talking about a coach who, you know, you want to work with, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Like people keep saying like Dennis Allen's only hiring people he likes. What do you want to work with people you don't like? Like, (laughs) that's just what happens in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. To me, it's a relationship business. Yeah. It's about who, you know, right. and that, that's just, that's everywhere though, too. I mean, obviously, and, and I think you brought up a great point. It's like, uh, these other coaches obviously have a, a pretty high view of, of what 
you know, that Brown was able to do. And I guess you, you the biggest trouble I guess you would see is that he's had some success in these stops and it just seems to fall off after a while. But at least, you know, the first couple of seasons go all right. Well, so, yeah, I think the, the issue you have is like, okay, what's the big picture here? And is the defensive coordinator role the issue? Like, if he's just a defensive backs coach, he seems to excel. But when you give him a bit too much of that responsibility, it seems to fall off. And, you know, you look at what happened with the Browns, right? Like, I think things went pretty well in their first season there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it was, it was the run defense that yeah. really let that team down. And it really, you know, kind of spelled the end for Joe Woods in, in Cleveland. Um, you know, they, ha they have one of the best defensive fronts in football. There's no question about it. Miles Garrett is a star. Jadavion Clowney is really good. I think he's kind of lazy, but he's like just – he could roll out of bed and, and get double the sacks in a season. Like he's that type yeah, of you, player. You just w wish that effort and, and heart was there from him. It seems like a guy that just turns it on when he kind of wants to, unfortunately. Yeah, and this past season they allowed – 2,300 yards rushing, a shade under 2,300 yards rushing. They ranked 25th in the league. And it was a big drop-off, like you mentioned. Like, it seems like there are diminishing returns, especially in a run defense perspective. And, you know, they were ranked 9th and 12th, respectively, in the first two first two seasons. And, you know, on an offensive guy's staff, like we talked about, he's the one who ended up falling on the sword, Joe Woods. You, you had to fire somebody – just not unlike, you know, you go back to the seven and nine seasons with Sean Payton, right? Like you're not firing Sean, but some, someone's got to get the ax. Like someone's someone's got to be the scapegoat here. And, you know, you that was Rob Bryan. Now, that was a good one. It probably was Rob <laughs> Ryan's fault. But I was going to say, that day, example, that, example yeah, that was a good fire. <laughs> well, right. Like it, it's not a great example, but it's the same kind of premise. It's like, yeah. okay, the head coach is going to keep his job. But someone's head's got to roll somewhere, right? And so for the Saints, that was Rob Ryan. Here, I think you're looking at Joe Woods because, you know, we saw that that Browns team play in week, what was it, 15, 16, week 16. Did it seem like the defense was the issue for that team? Did it seem like the, the, the defense was what was letting them down? Or did it seem like Kevin Stefanski was, was, had a game plan as if he didn't realize that you couldn't throw. <laughs> they threw the ball 30 times in a game where, like, you could not throw the ball. And, 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 and like, just let Nick Chubb kind of stand there. Like, I don't think that the biggest issue with that team was Joe Woods last year. But he did, you know, the defense did struggle. And you saw a lot happen at the end of the season with Jadavia and Clowney. And there was a lot of tension. And there was a lot of energy toward the hashtag fire Joe Woods and it happened and you can't deny that he has struggled in his defensive coordinator spots and so if you are looking for a reason to criticize this hire that's where you do it you don't do it in 2014 with the Raiders you look at how it went with the Broncos from 2017 and 2018 you look at how it went with the Browns from 2020 to 2022 and how that defense seemed to take a step back and it was particularly in the run defense part of the equation that that it happened and i think that is significant as you go forward into this role yeah for me everything that we've been looking over right now the early goings on wherever he seems to have landed goes well it's just you know as the seasons go on maybe he's not he hasn't lived up to that same success over the the given time but man we're heading into year one with the saints uh, you also mentioned maybe he, as a defensive, quote-unquote, defensive coordinator, he's not going to be calling the plays in New Orleans. We know that's still going to be Dennis Allen. So does that attention for him really get diverted to where his specialty is in the secondary, which could only be, which would be a good thing, I think, for, for the Saints? Yeah, and, and so here's here's Anthony Walker, who is a free agent, by the way, <laughs> uh, linebacker, talking about Joe Woods as his coach. And I, I think it's it's telling kind of the 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 – the language he's using and, and how he's talking about like this is a second quote from a from a guy on this team who who is talking up a guy who just got fired. Yeah, so Walker's from the Browns. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh Walker's on the Browns. He's a free agent, but yes, he's been on the Browns. Yeah, okay. I think one of the best coaches um I've ever had before. Um first of all, great person, you know, great just everyday human being. Obviously a great coach. Um put us in positions to be successful. 
and we didn't get the job done for him. You know, we didn't execute well enough. And I always say, man, I'm a little biased. My dad's a coach, so, you know, there's no perfect play call, only perfect execution, and uh, we just didn't execute well enough. Yeah, so this is two different members of his defense talking about a guy who has already been fired and saying, no, it was not him. It was us. Like Could have easily like, thrown him under the bus, but they didn't, right? Oh, well, right. Like, they, they have no reason to continue huh. to show loyalty to this guy other than the fact that it's like, yeah, we we sucked. Like, we weren't good. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, I think that's, and I think that's telling. And so you look at a guy who, you know, clearly DA likes, clearly people who have worked with him previously like bringing back. Clearly his players feel like he's doing a good job and, but something's not clicking and you, you wonder, okay, maybe, uh, maybe calling the plays is, is not working for him. Maybe taking a step back and focusing his, his kind of workload a little bit will help. And so that's where I think you kind of land. Now, this is a guy who has shown kind of flexibility, right? With the Broncos, they, he coached a three, four, um, you know, obviously a big Fangio inspired scheme um, with the Browns. He went, he what showed up on a team that had Miles Garrett, who is a very much a 4 3 defensive end. He's not going to be a stand up rusher in a 3 4 scheme. So he had to adapt to a 4 3 under scheme. And they, they did a pretty good job with that, right? Like Miles Garrett has had back to back career high seasons in terms of sacks. He's had 16 each of the past two seasons. The year before that, I believe it was 12 or 13. So you're talking about a guy who has had, who has logged 40 something sacks over the past three years. So you know, for a guy who is focusing on the secondary, or at least that's his kind of bread and butter, the pass rush has excelled. It's the run defense that really kind of fell off. And so that's where I think you're looking with the Saints and you're saying, okay, how can we make this work? What is the vision here? And Dennis Allen kind of being that catch-all at head coach, I think plays a big role. Yeah, and you mentioned the the run defense. Unfortunately, that was – a spot this year with the Saints that definitely dipped a bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see where they look to upgrade there. And, and I think a lot of that's going to be obviously uh, up front on that D-line, which has, which has a number of free agents. But um, that's something that will be a huge issue if it continues, obviously, because, yeah, we're not used to that. The last couple of years, besides this one, uh, this past one, obviously, for the Saints, they've been pretty stout against that that run. Yeah, and I think that's that's something that you have to fix. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So I think part of that is why you go to a guy like Todd Grantham, and you know when you're when you're hiring a defensive coordinator, and I think what the Saints are looking for here is someone who can maximize their very talented defensive back room, right? Which Joe Woods has plenty of experience doing, and You've seen it happen, but you also don't want to overload him in a defensive coordinator role, which has not been the situation that he has thrived in. But with the Saints, you are in this very unique scenario where he's not going to be overloaded in that defensive coordinator role because Dennis Allen is going to have so much of the responsibility on game days. Todd Grantham, I would assume, is going to be the defensive line coach, and he's going to be the guy who you really lean on to help shore up that run defense and, and really hopefully – hopefully manage Peyton Turner into the type of player that you drafted and expect him to be right. Michael Hodges is still there at the linebackers coach, assuming he's not poached for something else. Right. So you have a scenario where you can put this guy into a situation that he hopefully can thrive in. And it could be a much more hospitable kind of holistic approach to it because you, you will already have all of this in place. And so that's kind of where I see this going is I don't know if you're going to hire a secondary coach, but one way or another, you're going to expect Joe Woods to be heavily involved in the defensive back room. And as you should, right? Like, like that is where he thrives. And hopefully that all kind of coalesces into a, a, an effective defensive coaching staff. But I think that's where you ended up, right? Like, you knew you, whoever you're hiring for a defensive coordinator is not going to be kind of the rock star defensive coordinator. And so you, you wanted to find someone who not only had significant defensive back experience, but also does understand the ropes at defensive coordinator. And that's exactly what you got in this guy. And so 
All that is to say, like, I think it's a solid hire. Like, I don't know what people were hoping for at defensive coordinator, but a guy who has a solid track record of putting out elite defensive back performances and also has experience as a D coordinator is only 52. It's not like he's ancient and has, and has experience in all of these systems, has been to the Super Bowl twice, has been to three NFC championship games. I don't know, guys. I think it's a solid hire, and I'm excited to see what he's able to do with this group. I'm definitely curious too, just because we're going now from Aaron Glenn, from Chris Richard, and likely to Joe Woods as your "quote unquote" secondary guy. And yeah, that th- those are some pretty good names right there, you know. Yeah, and and like I, I have a lot of questions on the offensive side of the ball, right? Like I, I don't I don't know how that's going to go. I don't know who your quarterback is. <laughs> I I don't know if I trust Pete Carmichael. Um, Still need a tight like, ends coach. Like that's that's what we should be criticizing, um, but for some reason, if Dennis Allen's name appears in a tweet, <laughs> whatever the information is that follows has to be bad. It can't well, be I good. think the criticism for the offense is definitely there, and f- fans are still bemoaning the fact that the Saints decided to retain P. Carmichael Jr. I think. Yes, and we haven't even gotten to who the freaking quarterback is yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the guy we didn't talk about in the first segment that we should have, and I I knew I was forgetting somebody, is Ronald Curry. Um, Like, Ronald Curry is a guy who I could see Sean Payton calling and being like, hey, you want to be my offensive coordinator, right? Uh, And I don't don't know if he would say, nah, I'd rather stick in New Orleans or do whatever, but um, that's a guy who I think the Saints could very much lose. And so, yeah, like, I'm okay with the coaches they have in the building. It's the coaches that they might continue to lose – that, that concerned me more than that. But that's kind of my, you know, I didn't have a ton of time to go through all the, the history of, of Joe Woods, but like, I think what you do find there. when you, when you dive into it is impressive. And, um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold the Browns failures against him as the Browns did, because I I've watched enough Browns game to know that it's just a factory of sadness. Like good things don't happen to the Browns. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, I think there's as much reason to think that the Saints lucked out in this in the fact that he was available than, oh, Dia is just hiring a bunch of yes men, uh, which is his, another he's, thing. He's hiring his buddies. Yeah, he's just, hiring, he's just hiring his friends. He's only hiring people he doesn't hate. What the hell is that? Yeah, if, if you've hung around him four games, you're in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> four games, that's the cutoff. Anyone who's yeah, been last, sure. they, they, they're going out. But yeah, um, I mean, but, there's yeah. there's still there's still a ton obviously that needs to unfold uh, with the coaching staff. But it's it is curious when you start mentioning things on the offensive side of the ball. How much can you do without knowing who the quarterback is, or do you just do you just adapt? Kind of, kind of, because I'm I'm curious to see how they're going to tr- approach this. I agree, and so just programming wise, I put up a story on WWL.com today that kind of breaks down a lot of what Jeff Ireland talked about. Okay. I think that's going to be something we can get into in the Thursday episode, um, assuming no other crazy news happens, because I don't know if we got into it well enough uh, in the last episode and we kind of talked about it. And he does say a lot of really interesting things regarding the quarterback position that I think is worth kind of diving into. So if you're if you're one of those who likes to stay tuned, stay tuned for that, um, hopefully in the Friday episode. If not, that can be something we dive into on Tuesday's episode next week when, you know, at a certain point this offseason, we'll stop having breaking news to talk about. You think? Maybe. Maybe, right. Happened. Yeah, I don't I don't know. With with the what we got going on right now, there seems to be a lot that can happen between trades, releases, coaches signing. I don't know. It is really wild. Like, we, like, we went to the offseason, like, how are we possibly <laughs> going to have enough content for two episodes a week? And it's just like, oh, God, Sean Payton gets traded. You fire this guy. This guy gets hired there. It's like always oh, something. Um, but that's it. The NFL never sleeps. But uh, that's it. That's all I got, Steve. You got anything else before we clear out? No, no, sir. Just uh, I'll be, you know, tuned everywhere. It's waiting to see what happens with this Saints squad because, yeah, like you mentioned, and I think we've talked about it before, and, and folks know, fans know, like there really is no off season when it comes to football. Maybe like a week or two in July, kind of thing, right before training camp. I don't know. Yeah, like we're gonna we're gonna be talking about the draft here, and like it's gonna show Ad up. Ad nauseum, right? We we're, gonna, we're gonna hate the draft. Yeah. Um. But yeah. All right. That's it. This is inside black and gold. That's the episode. Talked a lot about Joe Woods. Hopefully, 
you got some information you didn't have already. And I'm sure y'all are yelling at your phone saying, what an idiot. Homer. Dennis Allen I hired him in 2014. He must be bad. Um, Hopefully That's, Joe Woods listens and appreciates us. Yes, I'm. Re- this is really just me hoping to get Joe Woods on my side. So when I talk to him, you're like, "You're that guy." No, Joe Woods won't listen to our podcast. And if he does, thanks, Joe. But I, I'm he's not. The, no, I'm not. He's the one. Him. He's one of the guys that gave us the five stars. Yeah, must, maybe he's the one star guy. I take it back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna re-record this episode because I'm now. I'm now. I'm now. I'm officially gonna assume that he's the one star reviewer. Um, but yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks y'all for listening. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, who that? Like it. Subscribe. Do it.